Today's vlog is all about ways that I am working harder to be more authentically me, enjoying the little things in life like quality time with my partner and close friends. Hello everyone, welcome back to another weekly vlog. This weekly vlog is late. <laughs> I've been super super busy not only did we just have Valentine's Day which you guys are gonna see during this vlog but life's just been a lot lately it's been a lot so this vlog is a little bit late but I am happy to be here with you guys I'm excited to get back on track and hustle and grind so thank you for joining me today's the video is kindly sponsored by Ana Luisa and if you guys know Ana Luisa they are New York based sustainable jewelry company and I love Ana Luisa. I've worked with them multiple times in the past throughout the past year and honestly their jewelry is my favorite and it's the jewelry I only ever wear so if you guys ever see me wearing jewelry you can pretty much count on the fact that it's probably from Ana Luisa and you may be thinking wow that's like super biased of you. But is it? Is it? Is it? I don't think it is. There's a reason why Ana Luisa is my favorite jewelry brand. Not only are their pieces absolutely stunning and totally my style, like they have so many options out there, but what I love about them is that they freaking last. They last. And I think one of the biggest difficulties for me when it comes to buying jewelry, and one thing that I like about Ana Luisa is that their prices aren't crazy. You're getting high quality pieces that don't have crazy luxury markup so you're getting those jewelry pieces that would otherwise with other luxury brands be like 100 and something 200 dollars 300 dollars 400 dollars for these gold pieces but Ana Luisa cuts out those markouts by being a sustainable brand. Their packaging is very, very minimalistic. When you order your Ana Luisa products, it comes in 100% recyclable cardboard boxes, and even the little pouches are so, so small, which keeps that price down for you guys. You'll notice other brands, when delivering their products, they come in these glamorous boxes, but that marks up the cost of your product. Packaging is expensive. Ana Luisa cuts the cost down by giving you and delivering to you boxes that are not only sustainable, but also help cut down on the markup on that price of that jewelry. So you're getting those high quality pieces that aren't costume jewelry, that aren't gonna tarnish if you sweat a bit in the summer. And my gosh, you guys, in the summer I sweat. And one thing I was so happy about with my past two experiences with Ana Luisa is that the jewelry that I wore all summer didn't tarnish one bit. It didn't go green on me. It didn't start staining my skin. It didn't start turning from a wonderful gold shade to this coppery color with green on it. And it it lasted and it lasted through sweat. It lasted through SPF. It lasted through hopping in the shower. Like it's good quality pieces. And working with a brand that has a sustainable mission that actually puts an effort into recycling their goods, sourcing their goods and their metals from reputable places and sustainable places really means a lot as the jewelry industry, as you guys may or may not know, can be not the best, especially when it comes to sustainability. So knowing that Ana Luisa has a strong mission in really representing that and really bringing that into the whole mission of their company and their brand statement really is like impressive, you know? I feel like a lot of brands can say that they are sustainable and then they don't really talk anymore about it. But if you go on their website and you check them out, you can see that they really do take action in their mission and it speaks through even their packaging and how they deliver their brand as well. So I really like that about them. Pieces that I got from Ana Luisa this time, I really wanted them to be a little more Korean inspired, like very K-style. Previously, I went for the very like, you know, trendy influencer, like beachy kind of like, chic vibe with the pendants the very like simple classic looks but this time i wanted something very k inspired or at least for me i find it k inspired today i have on the cora earrings they are heart shaped little safety pin inspired earrings very k style in my opinion pardon my wig lifting i can't for the life of me get it to lay flat there but i just love the look of them i think they're just so cute so simple and they like really can go with anything because although they look like safety pins they're still like very very discreet so they're almost like a classic look aside from that i'm also wearing the laura bold link chain necklace this one i wanted something that matched the earrings 
Again, they're both very kind of discreet. They're not super heavy and you really can wear them with anything. I love that they match together. The best part about these, although they are totally my style and a fun little case style look, so if you're into case styles, this is one to get. If you guys want to shop my jewelry, I actually have a link made where you guys can directly check out my jewelry pieces that I got from Anna Luisa. I'll have that linked in the description box down below. It's the very first link, so you can check it out if you're interested. Aside from that, but I have a discount code for you guys as well. Use code Bronwyn Papineau 10 my full name and 10 to get 10% off your order not only are these already affordable but you can pretty much save the tax on your order as well so you're getting a really great deal honestly I love them they're my favorite brand like best jewelry brand so today is a wig day which is super fun I always love the days that I wear a wig like it's just it just makes everything so much better but anyway I want to give you guys a little behind the scenes of what this Instagram photograph looks like. So I wanted that bed look because one of my best performing photos on my Instagram, like my top one, is a photo that I took last year in quarantine around the same time where it's just me in bed. Like an above overhead shot, just like, yeah just super casual so I want to start creating more content like that but I don't want to create the same thing over and over again because that's boring so I had an idea with the whole like window up against the window bed shop I'm not gonna move my mattress from my bedroom here and I'm not gonna buy a blow-up mattress so this essentially is the shot it's just our duvet cover and then we don't have a white duvet cover but I have this What's it called? Like bed skirt. Yeah, like a bed skirt that's white that I threw over top to cover it up so it looks more nice. I do want to get a white duvet cover, but you know, there's other things that are more important to get such as bed frame. But I basically just took pillows from our couch and then my actual pillow. Put some of my skincare I'm currently using along the side because I do want it to be skincare themed to a degree. And then for the actual back pillows, I took the pillows from our couch <laughs> and leaned them up against the window. And then of course I just have my curtains that I always have to give more of a fluffy like bed look to it. So it's just not so not squishy and fluffy and then i just kind of have everything else that's already mine just shoved to the side like that i have my studio light my one studio light on and then the chaos that is the rest of my room over here the absolute chaos and then my camera is set up on a vertical angle you should take if anyone's wondering you actually should take all of your instagram photos in a vertical format because they perform better and they're a lot easier to crop like instagram favors that kind of format over like horizontal landscape photos apparently don't quote me on that and then i have a timer and then that's the tether for the battery because that's my stream setup over here and then behind the pillow is where I hid my hand with my remote control to capture the shots. Super handy if you guys don't have a remote control for your camera. Game changer, especially if like you don't have someone to help you take photographs or if you do have someone, they're not like available all the time on demand. This makes it really easy to create content whenever you want to without having to wait for someone else to be ready. So basically with, with like my Instagram, I really want to start like the theme I want to go for aside from what I already had, which was very like aesthetic catered stuff, very like, I guess you could call it more of a softer, more angelic vibe, maybe even creamy. Um, that's the vibe I've been going for for the past year, but I want to make it more me. Like I want to make it more unique in a sense and what kind of defines me is like anime japan korea and skincare and then of course also like the aesthetic side of it right i love the fashion i love accessories i love beauty so i want to try to find a way to incorporate those key unique traits into my content so that's why i have like even though this is a very like aesthetic trendy kind of setup i want to make it more unique to who i am so throw skincare on the bed and then also put on a very anime inspired makeup look and wig to make it different and stand out from the rest right so that's that's the direction I want to take my content moving forward now that I feel like you know I think for like years it's been really hard for me to kind of find 
like a brand for myself and that's because like for the longest time I feel like a lot of people didn't think that fashion and beauty can also be anime it can also be like Japan it was very like if you like anime and fashion you have to be a Japan content creator and that's kind of it or say for example you like k-pop or you like k-dramas and you like korean inspired makeup then you have to be a korea youtuber or you have to be like that's it you can't be anything else but i feel like with tiktok and i feel like it's almost opened up a more open-mindedness to these kind of topics i'm trying really i'm really struggling to find the words here but i feel like it's opened up a lot of acceptance with anime and i remember before i moved to japan i would actually include anime and manga in my monthly favorites videos and i stopped doing that because i felt like although it was working for like a lot of you guys did like it i found a, it was almost turning people away i thought i could have been totally like ignorant i believe but anyway that's kind of the mindset i had but i kind of want to bring that back because that is that is who i am and why why am i holding back parts of my personality to kind of appease other people like i shouldn't be doing that because like if i want to keep doing like if i want to keep making content for you guys and i want to keep being who i am online then i have to be 100 percent who i am and not hold anything back hence like I'm going to just start wearing the anime wigs in my videos. I'm going to start wearing the anime wigs in my Instagram content. Will I wear them outside when I go grocery shopping? Probably not because that's a lot of work. But I think for like this kind of content, I can do it no problem and I, I should do it. And if you guys like that and you think that's a good idea, let me know in the comments section down below. Like if you feel, do you feel like you would enjoy looking at that kind of content? Would you enjoy skincare meets fashion meets influencer meets anime <laughs> it's a lot i feel like it's a lot but that is that is who i am and it's always been who i am so yeah Today for dinner, I'm having leftover dokbegi bulgogi, which is the Korean bulgogi but in the soup form, which isn't as popular as traditional bulgogi, but it is my favorite. Like, I well prefer this over traditional bulgogi. So, if you haven't had it before, always try to find the soup form of bulgogi. It is so good. I used to get this all the time when I worked in Korea for lunch, and even not at lunch, I just go out by myself sometimes and get it. So that's what I'm eating today. I actually got this on Friday for dinner, but I didn't film any of it because I was so tired. I just, I was so hungry, so tired. So I'm gonna enjoy this today for the last time. I think the best and worst part about wearing wigs is they're super fun for like when you're wearing them, but they make your hair underneath look so stupid and your head definitely gets itchy and you can't really scratch it. I'm just taking out my bobby pins that I used to secure it as much as possible, my sideburn flaps that I can never get to lay flat. I really need to buy got to be glued hairspray because that's the one everybody uses. Ugh. So much fun! I need to wash it though, I think. Uh, ooh, I'm all crisp at the sides. Now we're back. Oh, so itchy. Ooh, that's good. Back to regular old me. 
So we finally got our chairs in. I'm really excited about them, but they're a lot shorter than I actually thought they would be, which is pretty funny. But with that being said, this isn't a proper table. Like at our old apartment, I have my mask on because I look gross today, like I just woke up. But at our old apartment, we had like the same height of counter, but it had two different levels and one was like a table height. This one's like a high top counter. So our chairs are kind of made for like standard height, but then like this counter is really, really high up. So it looks a little bit silly because they're short. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to get like either lifts for the seat or like leg extension like little shoes you can put on them so if any of you guys know where to get stuff like that let me know um, like it's fine <laughs> like it's not the end of the world but it would be nicer to have it a level higher so like your chest is like that yeah anyway I'm trying to film with my camera a little more often because for like a year or over a year I've been filming with my phone and I originally started filming with my phone because I wasn't like I was really really busy and I was working so when I was out I wasn't actively out for vlogging but now like I'm always vlogging so it kind of makes sense to start using my camera again even though I don't like how it makes like some of the scenes look and it's not like as convenient as my phone we're gonna try to give it a shot for this vlog so let me know if you guys prefer the quality of my camera again and if you do then maybe we'll try to convert to using the camera again you can just get an old phone book to sit on yeah, yeah, yeah. and maybe a booster seat yeah, for well, me you know, why don't you just put a pillow on your chair and sit on that? <laughs> but it'll fall off for a new booster seat Garlic and dill, and not made into a roll. <laughs> so we used to rolls. <laughs> what did you do differently? Also, did you put kufa in there? Mm -hmm. I'm just making the head motions right in your video. Just that's all they're gonna see, you know. That's nice. Please pardon how stupid my hair looks. I have the stupidest looking hair when it's up like casually. This is why like I never wear my hair up. And um, yeah, anyway, today is a big house cleaning day because I need to finally take down our Christmas tree. I left it up until now because I don't know. I always like having it lef left up as long as I can. Like it's just like makes me happy and stuff anyway pardon the no makeup look i know i look like a tragedy i look like i literally look ill when i have like bed head and no makeup on like i just look like sickly anyway today's a big house cleaning day um and i just kind of want to update you guys on the house cleaning because my boyfriend's not here and i feel like he would get so frustrated he probably wouldn't at all he's so amazing but um i feel like he would get frustrated with me like i'm complaining and, and like could be more grateful and you guys might think the same but there's like a lot of things that's frustrating basically what i want to point out to you guys is our tv situation has been like this for two and a half months and i just so badly want a media unit and i don't know why we aren't getting one yet and it's driving me insane because media units aren't cheap you guys like if you own your own place and you've ever bought a media unit before you'll know they're like minimum three hundred dollars for like a nice looking one like not a super cheap like run-of-the-mill standard basic basic and of course like since we're living in a place that we're trying well i'm trying to like have a theme i don't want to just spend 200 dollars on one not love it ends up getting rid of it and just spending more money to get one that i actually like so this drives me insane every single day especially when i have to clean because it's the biggest trap for like cat hair and dust and it's just chunky it's not flat up against the wall because we have to try to hide the wires and our living room in this apartment is small much smaller than our previous one and it's just like it takes up so much room and another thing is this carpet our old apartment it wasn't an issue because 
it was far away from our cat's litter box. Like our cat's litter box was on the other side of the apartment completely, but here we're not able to do that because our front door closet is too small to fit the litter box. So we have to put it in our, our pantry. It's just the biggest, biggest catch for cat litter and cardboard chunks. So this is the litter situation. I haven't vacuumed yet because I've been putting off vacuuming because I have to vacuum every single week. And sometimes I'm just exhausted of vacuuming. Um, I have a broom to just kind of manage the litter that does get scattered out. I bought this shoe mat, like this bristled shoe mat because I've been struggling with managing the traction of his litter because like any cat after he goes number two he flies out of here and he has a specific path he likes to follow which is coming out of here he'll walk over to the carpet stand there and just like shed litter all the way there then he'll come back all the way here and immediately go into our bedroom so there's always a trail of litter from here to the carpet that gets caught in the carpet and then into our bedroom which is the worst like it's so annoying I'm, it drives me insane and i thought the litter that i have now is good forget what i was saying because my cat was literally choking on the christmas tree just now like why what's wrong with you like he went into the christmas tree and was choking on like a piece of like i don't even know where it came from like something that clasps you know like parts together and i had to like reach into the back of his mouth and pull it out like frick i don't who else's cat is as insane as mine like he is so destructive and like i know in one of my vlogs you guys were like oh um like are you sure you're playing with him a lot and we try like he prefers to like shred cardboard boxes play with the sink chew our clothing which i found a way to like manage it and just stupid things like fortunately like thank god he doesn't go for cords like <laughs> But like we have a laser pointer, which he doesn't always like, he loves to play with it, but it's very short lived. So it's only really at nighttime that we do that. We have like so many toys for him that he just like doesn't care about. And it's just so frustrating. I don't know, I'm sorry if I'm ranting in this video and I'm sorry I'm like choosing to rant when I'm looking like a disaster. But um, anyway, so the litter situation is frustrating because I purchased this litter called, Fe I think it's Feline Fresh, it's wood, like chips like sawdust but not dust it's in like little like chunks and it worked great in our previous apartment because our litter box like i was saying it was in the hallway around the front door which was really far from our actual living space so by the time he would get to the living space the traction was bare minimum like barely anything um but then in this apartment it's not really working so i'm thinking once i'm through this litter bag which i got a pretty big one because i thought i loved it um i'm gonna try switching to just pellets completely litter pellets um that are wood pine like wood shavings because they're best for the environment over like corn and clay and oh my he's back around the christmas tree like i can't um and then I enjoyed the crystals, but they were just too expensive because they would probably last about a week and a half, almost two weeks. And then I had a couple instances where like they weren't fresh enough for his liking and he would pee somewhere else in the house, which was so bad, so bad. So, so far overall litter, I'm loving the wood ones the best, but I have to switch to pellets or try to find a way to get the litter box somewhere else. But I think just overall switching the pellets because it's not working in this apartment and it drives me insane having to sweep every day and like the carpet, I almost don't even want to have a carpet at this point because it's just the biggest trap for all everything everything is litter and cardboard chunks and you may be thinking why why cardboard chunks let me show you so like i was saying he's obsessed with shredding boxes it's his favorite thing to do this once was an amazon box believe it or not <laughs> like it's literally just a tray that's it that's it and it makes the biggest mess but we let him do it because it's what entertains him like it's one of the things that isn't destroying our stuff that entertains him and it's just like it gets tracked throughout the entire apartment and like i vacuum and like literally a few hours later it's everywhere again and it's just ah like i love having a cat i love our apartment but like for me a lot of the stuff that triggers my anxiety and my stress levels is having a chaotic living space and i just 
to be honest, 100% feel like I can't keep up and it's a constant like effort. It's it's every single day like I made I think I made a tweet about it where it's like I probably clean the kitchen at minimum 3 times a day alongside like preparing meals to eat and then like having a vacuum once a week which honestly should be more than once a week is just it's just a lot. And it adds so much to my like stress levels and it adds to my anxiety and it really impacts my ability to like or my even desire to vlog for you guys because my house always looks like a dive because of it. Ugh, it just drives me insane. And as well as with like our apartment and our living space, like not having a media unit, just like it looks so trashy in that corner. And then like our bed, for example, is a similar situation. I'm not gonna show you our whole room because it's a disaster always, but like not having a bed frame is really drives me insane too because with the litter situation, he tracks it and makes a path all the way there to my side, always my side. And like, it's just like, I, I, I don't like the feeling of living in in a barn and that's what it like it feels like and I just want to get these things yeah I don't know and it's just really frustrating because like it always looks like that and it's the biggest trap for like dust and hair and cat hair and litter and like I hop into bed and there's somehow litter in the bed and I'm like why is there litter in the bed like I just vacuumed Anyway, my moral of this vlog is like, what do you guys have any tips? Like, what are your recommendations um, for managing it? I, I really would love to get a Roomba, honestly. I think that would make a huge impact on keeping things organized and just, well, not organized, but keeping the litter under control, keeping the cat hair under the control, my God. Um, and just like keeping the litter out of the bed, but they're so expensive as well. Like everything that I feel like we need that will help reduce like the chaoticness is expensive. Like a media unit's expensive, a bed frame is expensive. And like, again, these are things like I don't really want to cheap out on too much because these are things we're going to have for a long time. Um, and I want us to love them. But yeah, it's just, I, I'm having a really difficult time and it's my number one annoyance. Um, so I'm happy to take down the Christmas tree today. That's going to clear up some space because I'm finally over it. Um, and just another round of vacuuming. And I think I'm just going to roll up the carpet until we have like a solution figured out because it really is the bane of my existence at this point. Even though it's pretty and it does make the room cozy. But it's, it's more often than not covered in cat hair, covered in cardboard chunks and covered in litter. And our cat loves to like dive into it so he it's always squinched and like it's never laying nicely it's always like just looks like a blanket that was thrown on the floor because it's all crunched up and like shoved which isn't not, like it's just it's it's not nice it's not nice i might put it in my room actually the office and it would be nicer to get like a proper carpet for that area like a nice fluffy shag inspired rug like not a like cheap shag but like a nice shag but once we get better litter like a uh, pellet litter i think that would be better I am at Liz's because we're having a Galentine's Day today. Just like small number of us, I think like five in total, getting together to kind of just have a girls night for Valentine's Day. And I'm really excited. We're all dressing up because who dresses up anymore, you know? Who dresses up anymore? I don't, so I'm excited, I'm excited. I got her some roses. We got the wine, chips. Prepping veggies, salad, setting up some rose petals to make it romantic. Just did a mini little photo shoot in the parking garage with roses. It was so fun, but it's freezing.
It is Valentine's Day and my boyfriend, Honey Boy, surprised me with a winter staycation at Niagara Falls. That's, that's it. <laughs> but I haven't been here since I was probably like two years old. Um, shocking because I live in Canada, but it's so beautiful in winter. Like, wow like everything around the falls is coated in like such a thick layer of ice like ice So excited. I've never in my life had room service before. What a what a luxury. Ooh, I'm excited. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. 